Ladies and gentlemen, I bring to you John Gillespie, the man who went against the odds to prove he's a great fit for the movie business. Hi, John. Welcome to the show. Hello. John, I'm very curious to know an honors degree in law and you studied film in uh, the Carlton University of Ottawa. I mean, it does not look like an Adam and Eve combo to me, to be very honest. Mm -hmm. So what was the thought behind pursuing law on one end and film studies on the other? Uh, that's a good question. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I would say that, um, to my surprise, uh, my law degree helped me more in film than my film degree did. Because in producing, you have, you know, um, a crazy amount of uh, contracts, contract law. Every song that you have in a movie has at least three contracts. So it was actually a very good marriage, uh, to my surprise. But it also helps you, I think, uh, politically, logically. So I always think that uh, uh, carpenters and lawyers are very, very similar. They're very logical people. So if I talk to carpenters on a film set, or if I deal with lawyers when we're doing bank closings, they're very, very locked in logically. So you know exactly what they're saying and they know exactly what you're saying. Correct. So there is a really good marriage to my surprise. Yeah, so. <laughs> nice. So you worked as an art director and production designer in almost 15 films and then you decided to enter in producing. And you have good knowledge about sound, pre-production, production, financing and delivery. How important do you think it is for any producer to understand the various stages of entertainment business? Um, I think it's very good and very useful to have a general knowledge of everything. Uh, you don't need to go to the extreme of uh, going and working in every department, but if you have an understanding of it, it definitely helps. So for example, for me, uh, I always tell my film directors and my first assistant director, the, the two rules I always say before any shoot is, um, if sound needs another take, sound gets another take. Because yeah. what happens in the film business is camera rules. So camera needs lights, camera needs uh, a very large department. Sound is a very limited department, but sound is very, very expensive mm -hmm. for a production if you don't get good quality takes. Right. So the sound department normally doesn't get a lot of support. So as a producer, I learned if you don't support the sound department, yep. uh, you will suffer and you will pay lots of money in post-production. Right. So it, the better understanding you have that, and also even some experience in the art department, you need to sometimes support other departments because it's a hierarchy. Right. You know, there's an elitist thing going on sometimes right. in most businesses, but in the film business is no exception too. So, right. yeah. so it's, it's uh, good to know about each and every field. Right? It, it definitely will make you more efficient. It will save you money. It will save you a lot of grief if you know some of these rules before you get into you know, a serious problem. So I, I went through post-production and I learned some valuable lessons that mm -hmm. has helped me immensely working as a producer, so for sure, yeah. Right. Yeah. So John, when we talk about movie business, all I can or anyone can think about is like the hefty bank balances and the glamour. But I believe that uh, nobody understands the struggle one has to go through to get to that level. Tell us something about your journey in this business. It's interesting you say that because <laughs> a lot of people think of the film festivals and the red carpet and and definitely that's a, an important part and it's a valuable part because you need to promote yeah. the business yeah. uh, internationally you know um, but for me I've always enjoyed the um, the behind the scenes the making the creativity the development sometimes the struggles you have with other filmmakers this is for me the most rewarding um, but it's also nice when you go to, let's say, the Toronto Film Festival, you know, you yeah. go to fest festivals around the world, right. it's very, very exciting. But that's a nice reward. The, the real work is what you fall in love with, you know. So, right. yeah. so you are in love with producing. You were meant to be a producer. Oh, yeah. I, I, I always say to myself that uh, to, to when I tell people, because they ask the difference between what a, what, what's a producer and what's a director. And I tell people, it's the same job, it's just we have different powers of veto. Right. So in the case of the producer, you have the obligation to make sure 
everything stays on schedule, right. you know, plus you have to respect the creative aesthetic side. Right. Uh, so I find that uh, for a producer is you just have to, you know, you know, be a political creature. You have to be understanding and, you know, work with your crew, you know, so, right. yeah. Honestly, if I tell you, when I was five, I wanted to be a doctor. At the age of 10, it changed to pilot. And when I was 15, I changed my plans to become an engineer. And eventually, guess what? I started fashion. But all throughout these years of me planning my future, sure. I had this love for film industry. I always wanted to be an actor. Literally, everyone wants to be a film actor. Right. So did you never have in mind to act in movies or was producing the thing for you? It actually was more directing and I still have ambitions to direct, okay. but I have such a, a grave respect for the occupation of a director. I, I felt that I didn't have, I, I've directed some small features, mm -hmm. some student films, I've done second unit directing, but I, I believe you need a lot of life experience, so I think maybe soon I'll be ready to take that job. But acting, no, I, I, I admire actors. It's really, really hard, you know, right. memorize lines. I think that, the easier uh, performance or an actor looks, the harder it is. It means they put more skill into it. So I've, I've been blessed to work with some really, really talented actors that are jaw-dropping to watch in person. Um, I think the first one that comes to mind is John Hurt. John Hurt was mm -hmm. mesmerizing to watch. Every take he did, he would do the subtle, subtle difference, and he would do it to perfection. And so for me watching that, um, I have a funny little story about acting. Sure, go ahead. I actually was um, sent to Russia as an art director to work mm -hmm. on a film called Crime and Punishment. Mm -hmm. And um, the actor who was supposed to play opposite uh, Theodore Bacal. So Theodore Bacal is, was the fiddler on the roof. He's a world-renowned actor. So the actor going opposite him was a young actor out of Los Angeles okay. who was told that he's got a, a part for a soap opera. So they had no actor. <laughs> so I just finished doing a 16 day job on set, very hard shoot. We were shooting at the Ostankina TV center. And the director turned to me and said, you're gonna play the part. I, I said, I'm, I'm not an actor. I said, I, you know, I can't do that. And he said, that's okay, it's okay. We have an acting coach here. He's gonna stay up with you all night and you're gonna learn your lines. Okay. <laughs> so, so we worked all night memorizing a line and I was terrified because I know I know how actors work mm -hmm. they're not gonna blame the director they're gonna blame me because I'm a non-actor so that's what scared me the most not the acting <laughs> sure. so to my pleasant surprise the guy took a red eye from Los Angeles made it into Moscow so he did the scene so I didn't have to <laughs> that's the closest <laughs> I got to acting so. you got saved huh? yeah no I'm, I'm okay with that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, John, you produced Hollywood North in 2003 that was premiered in Toronto International Film Festival. Correct. From where I see it, this was the turning point in your life. It was awarded the best film in Cinefest International Film Festival and also the Post City Toronto highlighted it, one of the best 25 movies of all times. Mm -hmm. What is the importance of Hollywood North in your life? I think it was uh, it, it kind of twofold. It was uh, very exciting because I got to work with uh, someone that I've always admired in the film business. Uh, um, Peter O'Brien was the director. Mm -hmm. That was his directing debut. Right. And he's a renowned film producer, not just in Canada, but worldwide. worldwide. And he's, he was a tremendous mentor for me. So to have the opportunity to work with him and to learn with him. It's funny, I just had breakfast with him um, a couple weeks ago and I told him, you know, so many years later, since we've shot the movie, how much I've learned from him as a filmmaker, as, as a, a, you know, a mentor, mm -hmm. as, as, a, as a gentleman, you know, he's just a tremendous talent. And we had so much fun working on that movie. It was a very, very tough shoot, but to me, you know, if you can look back on your work years later and say, you know, I'm really proud of it, you know? Right. Um, so in many ways it was also, a film about, um, you know, a young wannabe filmmaker who basically flew too close to the sun with wax wings. So it, it's, it was always worrying me that, you know, as a film producer, you're getting a little too close to your own work. Yeah. <laughs> because it was a tough shoot. So 
uh, in a way, I became the main character. So, you know, it's, I guess, life imitating art or art imitating life. life you know, yeah. so, you know. John, in the entertainment industry, you're as good as your last movie. So if you did well in your last movie, people know you, else they tend to forget you with ease. Unlike other businesses, you get very few to almost no second chances in this industry. Does this thought pull you back or you choose your next project more cautiously? Uh, that's a good question. I, I personally find um, that film, my motivation, and I always ask people when I interview, whether it's for a director, whether it's uh, sometimes cast, if it's young filmmakers, young actors, I always am curious, why are you in movies? Yeah. And some people, it's, it's, uh, it's always a good change, it's uh, an exciting you know, industry, uh, I can work hard and then take some time off. For me, my story was uh, as a young student driving home on my bike, and it's the closest thing I've had to an out-of-body experience. I was driving my bike home and I could literally see myself, it was nighttime, uh, and I could see myself smiling. And I was so happy. And I asked myself, my inside voice, why are you so happy? I didn't do very well on paper. Um, I missed my friends at home. I was a little homesick. Uh, there's a girl I wanted to date that I wasn't dating. <laughs> and what made me so happy is I went to see a double bill of a Martin Scorsese film called Mean Streets okay. and an Argentinian film called uh, Man Facing Southeast. Two movies I always wanted to see, and they were so fantastic that it just trans, you know, transformed uh, what my life was. Right. It put me in a different state of mind. And I thought, that's incredibly powerful. Some kid in Ottawa driving home, a little bit sad. But I wasn't sad because a story changed my environment. You know, so I thought I, that always motivates me. Because I say as a producer, my job is to turn 100 pages, like this mm -hmm. big, into 100 minutes of live action. So if you can pick a story that speaks to you, a story that, that moves you, then audience will come. If you build you know, a good brand, right. you, know, you will be fine. Right. It, it's a very much an industry where people follow or people lead. My personal opinion is you do what you feel is right. Of course you want something that's going to be commercial, mm -hmm. somewhere there's going to be audiences, but you don't know unless you take certain risks. So right. it, it does take a, a good balance between finance and, and art, artistic, you know, because it is an art business sure. that just, you know, it's a very expensive form of art, you know, unlike an artist that can just, you know, paint on a canvas, ours costs sometimes thousands or millions of dollars to yeah, do. Right. So you have to respect both sides, but you definitely have to give equal respect to the art. You know? Right. Yeah. And moreover, I feel whatever you love, you get the confidence to uh, you know, do it the right way so people, as it is, get attracted towards you. Of course, yeah. I, I believe that it's something that's always, I, I believe sometimes in this country, um, is a pitfall for a lot of filmmakers. They feel, well, we're from Canada, you know, we can't really... It's nonsense. Uh, right. Canadian filmmakers are as good as anyone in the world. Right. Um, and you have to have that kind of confidence and you have to have that kind of belief right. that you can work as hard, you can, you can create, and, and just believe in what it is. You can go after the biggest actors. Because it's funny, I did a, a lecture at the Santa Monica, um, Santa Monica University, mm -hmm. and they asked me a question like, how did you make your movie? Is it in Canadian dollars, in US dollars? I said, that's the great thing. It doesn't matter. It, doesn't it can matter. be in rubles, it can be in shekels. Don't worry about those details. Stay true to the story, into your belief. Right. Everything else will fall into place. Right. This is the main driving core for any young filmmaker or any older filmmaker. <laughs> that you, you have to still believe what you're doing matters and that you love the story. So that's what's beautiful about you know, cinema is it translates into all languages. You know, I've made movies where they were action movies. It didn't matter <laughs> where we were selling it. People could understand, uh, you know, in this case, it was a, a thriller 
And it just translated in all different languages. So that's, I, I love that kind of storytelling. Right. You know? so. And I, I would like to add that Canada being a multicultural country, you have more things to play in that, For right? sure. People sure. like more variety. Yeah. And you, you have to be open-minded as well, right. you know, to other cinemas. So that's a very good point as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So John, in this industry, other than being creative, you need to have sharp entrepreneurial skills. You need to find investors, do networking, look for good opportunities all the time. What is that one quality a producer, as per you, should possess to excel in this industry? I think you have to remain positive. Um, I, I think being positive allows you to motivate other people uh, because the, there's an analogy that the producer's job is to convince people that you know a glass is very much full even though everyone can see it's empty. Right. So you have to maintain a certain positivity, a certain amount of drive to have the people that are going to be working with you because as a producer you develop a script. It might be from uh, the book stage. You help it evolve into a screenplay with a writer maybe more than one writer, and then you're handing it off or partnering with a director to help execute your story. So you have to have a certain amount of trust, so you have to maintain being positive, you know, knowing that this is a very delicate process, the creative process, and that you have to also respect the money. So I always tell people, look, you come into a film, everyone has to walk a tightrope. Some people at higher elevations, some people at lower elevations. Sure. And the balance between the two is commerce mm -hmm. and art. Right. And you, you have to respect both. I never want any one person or one department to favor one over the other. And I always tell my directors, look, it's my job, with, along with other, some other people in my team, to worry about money. Don't you worry about money. Right. I want you to go for the best, go for the most. I'll tell you, well, I don't know if we can afford this, but we can afford that. It's a process. I don't need you doing my job, and I won't do your job. So it's, it's that kind of camaraderie, trust, but I think it starts with being positive, and every day for a producer, follow through. Just follow right. through. Right. Other than that, it's not that complicated. Sure. So John, in our first meeting, we were amazed how much you know about the movies globally, all across the globe. So, you spoke about some French movies, I remember some interesting English movies, and some very innovative Indi Indian movies you spoke about. How important it is for any producer to not just invest, but you know, have that immense love for cinema? Um, there's a great American filmmaker uh, who's world-renowned, uh, mm -hmm. Martin Scorsese. And right. Martin Scorsese has a great saying, which is, you have to learn the rules before you can break them. Right. And I had the privilege of meeting him. Uh, I took care of his poster collection at the Museum of Modern Art. And what that taught me is that you should be always open-minded, open-minded, open heart, to learn what other people are doing. Yeah. So in film school, we learned about you know Czech filmmakers, Japanese. The one industry uh, that I think I mentioned that I, do, I knew the least amount in was Bollywood. So uh, my wife is uh, of Indian descent, so she introduced me to these movies, and they are fantastic. Like the fact that they could go across three different genres and successfully tell a beautiful story, right. a lot of romance, but also some really, really good, good movies, you know? So to me, it's, it's great. It's also great to see younger countries in a cinematic sense mm -hmm. learn their craft and get better and better because Canada is very young but there's even countries that are even younger in right. terms of learning like uh, I think there's next to Bollywood let's see if I have this right I remember next to Bollywood it's Nigeria I think it's Nigeria that has the second largest film industry outside of Hollywood oh, that's and they're making they're making tons and tons of movies so they are as new to it as possible but the people love it. It's, it's very much like the industry in India. They support local filmmaking, local stories, and they're not considered masterpieces yet, 
but they're very entertaining and they will get better over time. So it's, it's really exciting. So for me, I know when I look at some of the stuff I did when I was much younger, you know, there's some things I like about it, there's some mm -hmm. things, and that's, that's the essence of the process of art. Sometimes you will look at something, you know, like, like this cup, you know, right. hey, I made this cup. By the time, you know, you put the, the cup down on the ground, you say, you know what, I can do better. And that's what keeps driving filmmakers, whether they're actors, directors, producers, that you love your craft, you love storytelling. Keep it simple. You know, it can be a complicated subject, but keep it simple. It's very, very rewarding. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Interesting. So, John, the industry is changing at a fast pace. Web series, you know, they are gaining a lot of importance all over the globe. So uh, do you intend to be a part of this change and enter into a different platform? What changes do you see happening in this business in times to come? Well, the beauty is uh, I took a hiatus from film. I started a family. I, I started a construction business, real estate business. And I was very, very nervous coming back to do my last film because I thought, oh, you know, I've been some time away. Technology has changed. It was. Like I, I, a friend of mine who I've known for 22 years, a uh, casting director, and he's a co-producer on all my movies, he asked me, how does it feel? And I said, it's like I just did a movie last month. It, it feels very natural. That part will never change. Storytelling will always be, whether it's around a campfire, whether it's in front of a film, whether it's a web series, whether it's uh, digital cameras, whether it's 35 mil, that stuff will change. So, of course, you have to evolve with technology. Right. And the good thing is the technology I had to relearn, it just made actually the process much easier, more efficient. So, actually, it makes storytelling easier and easier every time. So, you definitely have to embrace technology, but storytelling hasn't changed. Hasn't changed. You know, which is good. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Other than being a successful producer, you are a very loving husband and a very, very caring father. You like spending time with your family and you never miss your son's basketball sessions. What is the key to this balance between your personal and professional life? It's a challenge. Um, I uh, was married before and that took its toll on my relationship uh, because sometimes, you know, you're so devoted. Um, I think in many ways I was probably a workaholic because uh, we did five movies in 11 months and it really took its toll. I think I was too young, uh, but, but uh, she was very supportive. She went on to do her PhD, so we learned a lot from that process. I think this time I'm trying to be very, very respectful to what's important when you are at home and then what is work and keep it separate. Keep keep uh, communication alive. Mm -hmm. um, so so far so good. It's been a really a beautiful experience because this is the first film I've done with my wife and son and with their family. And having them involved and supportive has been invaluable for me. I, I couldn't do it without them. So yeah, right. sounds great. What is that one piece of advice you would like to give to younger generations keen on fulfilling their dreams in movie business? I'm sorry. One more time. So what is that one piece of advice you would like to give to younger generations keen on fulfilling their dreams in movie business? Thank you. Uh, I would say uh, it's, it's something I tell a lot of young actors if I meet with them is uh, stay true to yourself because <laughs> I, I, I target actors because sometimes um, to me the actor in the story is the most fragile uh, part because they have to dig down very deep right. uh, personally and have their personal experience come out on display. So they're very vulnerable. And that vulnerability sometimes comes with a lot of rejection. Right. And the rejection could come on your physical. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's some young actresses that will say, should I change my hair? Should I get this done? Should I get that done? And I say, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. <laughs> but I do know the answer is the more you can learn about your craft, learn about the classic movies worldwide, not just English. 
or not just American, uh, but learn about the old movies, present movies, learn about people that have come before you, acting styles, be true to yourself. The more you can learn about your craft, the more you can communicate. So for me, when I was a production designer, in order to communicate to a director, I had to know old movies, present movies, foreign films, so that we could actually dialogue, kind of like an, uh, a lawyer does with, with case. Okay. You have to know case law and what precedent cases so you can communicate. Right. It's the same in film. You need to know what other films are and what that means when you translate it. So, right. yeah. And apart from that, as you said, be positive. That's the game. Definitely positive, uh, true to yourself, true to your craft, learn what it is. The, the exterior is, is important. Like, yeah. I don't want to take away from that. Because the analogy I sometimes use about my job, um, or, or filmmakers, is you need to be the engine. Yeah. But you do need a flashy exterior. Right. The actors, the director, um, that, even the writer, mm -hmm. bring a certain amount of flair and, and beauty to a story. Sometimes the engine just needs to make it go. Right. So it's, it's really a good you know, mesh and melding of practical, pragmatic, and beauty. You know? right. that, that's what you're going for. Yeah. Right. True. Okay, John, Buckout Road, Prime News Entertainment's upcoming movie. Tell us a bit about that. What is Buckout Road and when is the release? We're planning for a release in the fall for both Canada and the United States. Um, it's been a, a fantastic experience. Um, very, very long in, in terms of getting it to the screen, but a really exciting picture because it is based on a real place. It's basically two miles of road uh, just north of Harlem, um, north of New York City. And the history in this place is very, very bizarre and also very, very much part of interwoven American history. Okay. So for example, uh, George Washington was born there. Uh, they had the battle that the Headless Horseman came from right. was there. Um, there's one extraordinary piece of information. So um, have you ever heard of a guy named Albert Fish? Not true. Okay, so Albert Fish was one of the most notorious serial killers in American history. Okay. Hannibal Lecter was based on Albert Fish. He lived on Buckout Road. Oh. So they asked him after he was captured, why this place? And he said, because it's a one-way street, nobody goes there, it's dark. Even today, because I went there uh, right around Christmas, because we were in New York City, yeah. and I went there when we, had, we were in the Harlem Film Festival. I went there in the daytime, and it freaked me out. It's a okay. real, our story kind of takes, because there has to be probably close to 13 urban legends. Mm -hmm. We chose three of them. And we took our story, uh, and we have a core of young kids that are myth busters. And they basically said, you know, all these things about Buckout Road aren't true. Okay. Or are they? They start to come to life. So that's where our story takes place. So we were, we were blessed having an incredible cast. I would say, of all the films I've done, this ensemble cast is the best by far. The performances of our lead, Evan Ross, uh, Diana Ross's son, um, uh, Dominique Prosha Chaki, um, Danny Glover, uh, Calm Fior, uh, Henry Churning, all tremendous, tremendous actors. And the supporting cast around them was also just, just a thrill to be around. So they really, really brought our film to life. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're, we're excited because we're trying to do a campaign of the 13 facts about Buckout Road, talk about the, so we're trying to educate people online about how this is a real historic place. It's got some incredible history, some incredibly dimon, <laughs> d uh, di uh, what's the word? Um, uh, diabolical. Okay. Uh, just some of, some of its history is uh, really shocking, yeah. um, but some of it 
incredible, as I said. So that's what this, this, this juxtaposition of this two mile strip of road, you know, the Underground Railroad ended at Buckout Road. Um, um, the largest uh, African American community in the end of the 1900s was at, on Buckout Road. You know, so it's, wow. got, it's got some incredibly cool, crazy, messed up history. And so that's what was really attractive to us to try to make a story around right. it. So, so far we've had a very successful run uh, in film festivals, uh, predominantly in North America. We have done some in Europe. Uh, we were in Manchester, Vienna, um, and we've, we've applied to everywhere okay. in the world. And uh, we're excited just to get it out there because we think it's a really, it's hard as a filmmaker sometimes to step back and be part of your own audience. Sure. And I've watched the movie many, many times, very objective, like, okay, I, I'm not invested in this movie, I didn't work on it, just watch it, just watch the movie. Yeah. And it's very, very entertaining. So that much I'm very, very proud of in the, in the right. film, so yeah. It sounds really interesting. Yeah. We would definitely go and watch yeah. it. <laughs> so thank you, John, for making us learn about what it takes to be on your side of business. We wish you good luck for all your future projects and Buckout Road definitely seems to be traveling on the road of success. Thank you. Great, thank you very much. So friends, that was John Gillespie, producer, Tri News Entertainment. I'll see you next week with more fun, excitement and knowledge from another business owner of Canada. Remember, Bay Street Diary is committed to bringing you the best. Till then, keep spreading love. Cheers.